Madam Speaker, yesterday the Prime Minister's National Security Advisor testified that her office and three deputy ministers received a memo warning that a sitting member of Parliament and his family were being targeted by Beijing. A memo that went into a black hole, but according to her, no one is responsible. It's the Prime Minister's job to run the machinery of government, and he has special responsibilities when it comes to national security. So will he finally step up and accept responsibility for this colossal failure under his watch? Here, here. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Thomas, for being here. Through you, Madam Chair, to uh, Ms. Thomas. We are here because of the July 20, 2021 CSIS memo that indicated that a Beijing diplomat accredited by this Liberal government was targeting a sitting member of Parliament, Michael Chong, by threatening to sanction his family in Hong Kong. This memo was sent to the Prime Minister's department, the PCO, and for two years, the Prime Minister did nothing. The government did nothing. The Prime Minister repeatedly claims that he first learned about this memo in the Globe and Mail. Uh, when did you learn about the memo? Thank you, Madam Chair, for the question. As I said to Mr. Chong at the time of uh, the CSIS briefing to him, I learned about it in the Globe and Mail. I had not previously seen the report, nor had the Prime Minister. You learned about it in the Globe and Mail, and then suddenly, after uh, it was reported in the Globe and Mail, two more MPs, Aaron O'Toole and Jenny Kwan, have been briefed by CSIS that they, too, were targets of the Beijing regime. When did the Prime Minister first become aware that these MPs, including the former leader of the opposition, was targeted by Beijing? Um, the Prime Minister was not made aware of uh, the targeting against Mr. Chong or Ms. Kwan before recent events and reporting. Uh, that has been done by CSIS. So CSIS has brought this forward to him in the last two to three weeks. You said the Prime Minister wasn't aware in the case of Mr. Chong or Ms. Kwan. What about Mr. O'Toole? Or Mr. O'Toole is my understanding. And he would have learned about that, you're saying, since May 1st? Yes. And when did you become aware that Ms. Kwan and Mr. O'Toole were targeted? In the last three to four weeks. In the last three to four weeks, and how did you become aware of that? Um, through a briefing from CSIS. It seems to me inconceivable that we have three, at least three sitting members of parliament that were targeted by Beijing, including by an accredited diplomat, and that you didn't know, and the prime minister didn't know, and only now, coincidentally, that it has been revealed in the Globe and Mail, is action being taken. How is that possible? How is that conceivable that neither the National Security Advisor, which is you, or any of the former National Security Advisors, or the Prime Minister, were completely in the dark about this? It seems to me, Ms. Thomas, and I'll let you respond, but it seems to me that this is a breakdown of the machinery of government under this Prime Minister's watch. Would you at least agree with that? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Cooper, as I said previously, I wasn't here in 2021, and I cannot account for um, the lack of information flow uh, to the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office, and I'm not going to speculate. Uh, I agree that uh, there needs to be a better management of intelligence that is coming into deputy minister's offices, minister's offices, into the NSIA office uh, in order to brief the prime minister and brief ministers. And we have taken steps to ensure that will happen. And not only to brief, but to provide advice on what should be done with the intelligence. Because reading the intelligence is one element of this problem. Giving advice on what to do about it is the second part of the problem, and we have strengthened both of those processes. Ms. Thomas, through you, Madam Chair, you've said that the Prime Minister didn't know, and you didn't know. So that's not just a matter of uh, what to do about it or what, how to act on it. You, you said he just didn't know. Uh, but except for the fact that what we do know is that in the case of Mr. Chong, 
The Minister of Public Safety was emailed about it by CSIS in May of 2021, but he didn't have the login information to his email after 18 months on the job. And then uh, this memo was sent by CSIS, not to anyone, but to the PCO and specifically the Prime Minister's National Security Advisor. So again, how is it that the Prime Minister didn't know why were those MPs kept in the dark, and in the face of all of that, would you not at least concede that that is a colossal breakdown of the machinery of government under this Prime Minister's watch? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as I've said, I cannot account and I will not speculate about what went on in 2021, and I know you are seeing my predecessors, and I know you are speaking to CSIS. Uh, I think that there was a breakdown in process, and we've rectified not only a breakdown in process, I think um, insufficient process. And so we have rectified those problems. I, I would submit it's more than a breakdown in process. It is a colossal failure on the part of this Prime Minister that we would have uh, two, three MPs that have been targeted. How many more MPs? have been targeted by the Beijing regime. I, CSIS will speak to you about their holdings uh, when they're here. Are they going to be, are those MPs going to be briefed or are we going to find out about it in the Globe and Mail and then we're going to be briefed? I, I think it's very clear from the direction given by the Prime Minister uh, and the ministerial directive from Minister Mendicino to CSIS and to the other intelligence agencies in his portfolio that the expectation is, yes, MPs will be briefed um, on the totality of the holdings against them, regardless of the, uh, the depth, the severity, the um, reliability of those holdings. So uh, members of parliament uh, who are in the, the holdings of CSIS will be getting very thorough briefs. Thank you. Madam Speaker, consistent with the Prime Minister not taking responsibility, one of his ministers claims that he isn't responsible for not reviewing a memo sent to his attention warning that the member for Wellington Halton Hills was being targeted by Beijing. He blames CSIS instead. Cover up, denial and blame. The Liberal story just doesn't add up. Why do these Liberals expect all of the power and none of the responsibility? Here, here. The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary. Madam Speaker, the issue of foreign interfer interference is extremely seriously. It's not new, and it's certainly not unique to Canada, but it is precisely why from 2015 we implemented a number of measures to deal with the attempted foreign interference in our democracy. We will never accept it. We are going to continue to strengthen our democratic institutions, as well as our uh, national security community to ensure information is properly shared with those who need it. Madam Speaker, while the Conservatives do nothing and just play politics, we take this seriously.